In this video, we're going to talk about energy flow in food chains. My name's Trudy, and I live in the San Diego area. San Diego has a relatively warm and dry climate, and the type of habitat that we have in this area is mostly called chaparral. It looks a lot like this picture. Chaparral is a type of ecosystem, and all ecosystems require energy to function. In this video, we're going to talk about where the energy comes from and how it's used. Some of the topics we're going to cover are why is energy needed, where does the energy come from, what's an energy pyramid, what's a food chain, and what happens when an organism is removed from a food chain. You'll have a chance to predict as well at the end of this presentation. Why is energy needed? Well, all organisms need energy for growth, for repair of cells and tissues, all organisms are made of cells and they need a lot of energy to repair the cells and to create tissue. All organisms need energy for reproduction and for movement. Even cells have some type of movement, so all organisms need energy for this. And organisms need energy to make chemical products. Cells are like little chemical factories, and it requires a lot of energy to make the types of chemicals that they produce. So where does all this energy come from? Well, it mostly comes from the sun. Energy in the form of photons hits the planet, and plants are able to use this energy to create chemical products, mostly sugars, and they use this energy in the, in the sugars to create plant matter. That energy is transferred to a first level consumer which eats the plants. When they eat the plants they're able to use the energy to create more biomass or more herbivores and that in turn is able to be consumed by a second level consumer or a carnivore or omnivore and these guys are able to consume and use this energy to make more biomass of themselves, in this case a mouse. So, does all this energy get used? Well, actually, organisms aren't that efficient at converting um, energy into biomass. At each level, there's about a 90% loss. Um, this is lost in the form of heat, as well as um, growth and maintenance, and um, there's, there's, they're only about 10% efficient in actually converting that biomass and having it usable for the next level up. So there's about a 90% loss for each one of these levels. An energy pyramid is actually a convenient way to show this relationship of the loss of energy um, in each level. So you'd need a larger number of plants to support your first level consumers, the insects, and those insects are able to, uh, to support an even smaller number of mice in the third level. So if we talk about energy in the form of units, if we start off with, say, a thousand units of energy at the plant level, there would only be about a hundred of those original units left for the insects to use at the second level in the energy pyramid. And of those hundred units that the insects are able to produce, only about 10 units are available to the mice at the third level. So let's say an owl swoops in and eats the mouse. How many units are left for the owl to be able to use and uh, consume? That's right, there's only about one unit left over for the owls to use. So that's why we usually have less, uh, lower numbers of carnivores in um, an ecosystem than we do of, say, plants or first-level consumers. That's why. So what's a food chain? Food chain is another way to show um, these energy relationships in an ecosystem. So here we have a very, very simple food chain. We have, of course, as with most uh, food chains on the planet. The sun starts off, gives energy to our plants. Our plants convert that energy into um, usable food for the grasshoppers, which are then consumed by the spiders. 
and the mice eat the spiders, and the coyote in this system is going to consume the mouse. So a food web is a little more complicated, and it's trying to show a more realistic view because usually um, our our organisms don't just eat one type of other organism. For example, if you look at the fox and the hawks and the owls and the snakes, they eat many, many uh, different types of organisms in this food web. And it tries to be a little bit more accurate and show um, these relationships, these energy relationships in an ecosystem. However, this is still a very simplified version of how these food webs actually work in an ecosystem. We don't have our decomposers in this image. Um, and we are not able to show all of the different types of energy relationships because it would just be too complicated. This is a simple way to show it and it's called a model. And we can use a model to, um, you know, kind of predict what would happen um, if there was some type of disruption to the system. So we're going to use our very, very simple example and show what would happen if we removed one of these organisms from the food chain. So in this case, let's remove the coyote. What would happen if the coyote was removed from the food chain, if we just had this very simple food chain? That's right, the mouse would reproduce and since it doesn't have the coyote to eat it and keep its population down, then we're going to get an overabundance of mice. So what would happen if we had many, many, many more mice in our ecosystem? That's right, the spiders would be removed. Once the spiders are removed, there's nothing to support the mouse population, and the mouse population would disappear. So with the spiders gone, now we're going to have too many grasshoppers in this situation. This is what happens when um, Farmers spray too much pesticide. They remove all of the predators from the ecosystem and then um, their pest insects become overabundant. And what's going to happen to the sunflowers if the grasshoppers become too abundant because all of their predators have been removed? That's right, the sunflowers are going to be devastated by the grasshopper population. So once the sunflowers are gone, then the grasshopper population is going to crash. So let's try this again. Let's remove the spider this time. What's going to happen if we remove the spider? I want you to guess. I'm going to remove the spider. What would happen to the grasshopper population? And what would happen to the mouse population? The grasshopper population would go up and the plant population would go down. If the spider population is gone away completely, what would happen to the mouse population? The mouse population would go down as well, and the coyote population would probably go down. Each link in this chain is very important. So whenever you disrupt any members of this chain, you're going to have effects throughout the ecosystem, and that's very, very important to understand. So what have we learned? Well, we've learned that energy is needed for all forms of life on the planet. That energy comes from the sun and continues up the food chain. Remember, the food chain could also be called the energy chain. An energy pyramid shows energy loss at each level of, a food chain, of the food chain. So at each level, when we go up the energy pyramid, we lose about 90% of the energy available. A food chain is another way to show energy flow in an ecosystem. And when one organism is removed from a food chain, it affects all the other organisms. These images um, came from the following sites and Gary Onstad was responsible for all the photography.